Well, we're ending the 2017 Cloverborn, the Relic Hunter series of the Third Reich, where it all began, in Bavaria, more specifically in southern Bavaria, in a place called Berchtesgaden. Hitler, in the 1930s, was arguably the most powerful man on the planet, and he could have, frankly, have chosen to live anywhere in Europe, from uh, beautiful regions in France, all the way to some of the stunning countryside in Poland. But he decided instead to go back to his roots. And this area where I'm driving today is very close to the Austrian border, where he was born at Braunheim Inn. Although Hitler, of course, was born in Austria and was an Austrian, after fighting in World War I, he uh, had a close affinity with Germany and the Germans. He considered the Austrians and Germans and all Germanic people to be of the same ilk or the same stock. He was, of course, a dictator, perhaps even an emperor. After all, they call it the Third Empire, the Third German Empire. Now, emperors in the history books are known to live in big castles or very large establishments with great lavish furniture and golden taps. Well, Hitler didn't do that. Of course, being a socialist and a left-wing radical, he couldn't do that. He couldn't uh, spend millions of dollars on a grandiose uh, building for himself as the emperor. Instead, he simply took a very, what could be considered, it certainly was back then, a humble farmer's house here in the area Berchtesgaden. Now, we're on our way to this place, and uh, this wasn't just where Hitler lived. His close entourage, many of the uh, significant leaders of the Third Reich, as well as a significant proportion of the ministers of Hitler's government were all living in this part of Bavaria. In fact, many of them within a couple of meters of his own house. And he would come here uh, quite frequently and spend time, particularly in the, in the summer, with uh, what was to become his, his wife, Eva Braun. Well, this is all that is left of the Berghof today. And these are the massive retaining walls for the Berghof. And the Berghof was situated this way. And it had several levels. And the big bay window would stretch out over the Alps in this direction. So let's get our bearings. I'm standing just in the middle of the official driveway and the outer walls of the Berghof. Leading up to the Berghof, there were many checkpoints where SS soldiers were stationed, checking papers to make sure that only the authorized uh, people could come up to see the Führer. The official driveway extended this way and led into a garage, on top of which just over here was a beautiful terrace overlooking the expansive scenery of the Bavarian Alps. Just to the right here, we can still see the basic foundations of the outer walls. If I stand here, 
some four meters above me was the lounge room and here was situated an enormous window which had mechanisms to allow the internal part of the glass window to be holstered up to allow an entirely free view of the Bavarian Alps. In this direction is the Hotel zum Türken, which still stands today, and one can still visit that and even have some great lodgings. Just above the hill was a SS Kaserne or military base, which housed a unit of the Leibstandarte Adolf Hitler or his personal bodyguard unit. A little bit further on this way was Hitler's private glass house because he was vegetarian. A little bit further on from there is the coal bunker, a massive installation which we'll have a look at shortly and it was used of course to make sure that there was enough heating for Hitler. If we were to yonder this way, and we'll have a look at that in a minute also, right at the bottom of this mountain is the escape hatch. So underneath me is the entire network of uh, bunker systems that was built to protect Hitler and his entourage. Every bunker system, of course, has an entry point and an exit point, and the exit point is just to my left in this direction. Well, we're in luck. It's been some decades since I've been to this spot and having wandered the length and breadth of the surrounds of the former Berghof, hidden under this fern, I have found what must be the last remaining relic of the former Führer's residence at the Berghof in Berchtesgaden. And I know that because this <coughs> is in fact the capstone to his terrace and this would sit right on top of some natural stone. We still have some reinforcing rods running horizontally over the capping, some nice recessing to allow the natural stone to sit neatly underneath. This truly is the last relic of Nazi Germany. The Berghof bunker complex had two entry points, one of which was of course from the Berghof itself and two exit points. One facing that way across to the other side of the mountain and one facing this way which is just below the Berghof. Now Hitler didn't die here at the Berghof in his beloved Bavarian retreat. Of course what happened is he committed suicide on the 30th of April 1945 in the Führer bunker in Berlin. So right now I'm standing just at the official driveway entry point to the Berghof. Back in the 30s, of course, Hitler was somewhat considered a celebrity, not just a leader of the people. And there was a fence here and thousands of people would sometimes just stand there hoping for a glimpse of the Führer. Above me is the still standing Hotel zum Türken. To my right, uh, was another house and that was the house of Bormann who was the state secretary and in that direction was Goering's house who was of course the head of the Luftwaffe and a well distinguished fighter ace of World War One. Surrounding me are the remnant remains of Bormann's house the secretary of the Third Reich. To my left is Hitler's former residence the Berghof just a short stroll away was Bormann's house, also nestled into the mountain with a beautiful view of the Bavarian Alps. 
Gorman was known for many things, but most in particular, he was known for a very famous birthday present because for Hitler's 50th birthday, Gorman had built the Kelstein House, which is still today a significant tourist attraction. Many people call it Hitler's Tea House, although Hitler never drank tea up there. Uh, his actual tea house was a much smaller building just below this embankment, which since then has also been removed by the authorities. You have to know your way around these woods. Just below me is the Hotel zum Türken, and underneath that was the former Berghof. And here in this area, where the Bormann house was, and just yonder the Göring house, is the last remaining secret entrance to the Führer bunker or Hitler's bunker. And all of these bunkers were connected. So Bormann's bunker, Göring's bunker, the Hitler bunker, and the bunker for the Hotel zum Türken were all interconnected for safety reasons. And I think just in this area here somewhere is the secret remnant entrance to the bunker. course I've got no choice but to get uh, down and dirty, probably wet, and call down there to have a look. To a historian, relic hunter and archaeologist such as myself, someone's trash is another one's treasure. And for me, an area such as this is certainly a treasure because all of these buildings have been demolished and there's just nothing left except this tunnel. And this tunnel which leads into the bunker systems of the Berghof and the other residences around here actually still contain personal items and relics from those people and that era. So I'm going to catch up and let's have a look. Well, here we are, the last entry point to the Führer Bunker in Berchtesgaden. It's wet, it's cold, it's damp, and it's mostly underwater. And I couldn't get very much further than this because uh, there's been a landslide. So obviously what's happened is the ceiling above has collapsed due to its age and weight of the mountain, and it's just let in a huge amount of dirt. But there we are nonetheless at the Berghof Führer Bunker. Well, with the last remaining sheds of light of the day, we end in this spot. This is the Berghof Coal Bunker. Yes, this massive installation of quite some size and magnitude held the coal used for heating for the Führer. <laughs> 